Hi friends, thanks so much for being here today. I'm Anna Hellman. Do you wanna talk about some organization? I love craft room organization. I love talking about it. I love seeing ideas. And I know that it's very possible that you do as well. I get a lot of feedback when I share ideas for organizing. I've been doing a lot of little organizing jobs here lately, and I thought it would be fun if I just share about what I've been organizing lately. You may see some ideas that will help you. You may see something that could help you, a little tip or you know something inexpensive you could do in your own craft space to help get a little bit more organized. The more organized we are, the more time we can spend doing what we love, which is the crafting. So I have several things here I'll share, some couple of new products I've gotten, uh, what I do when my stamp sets come in, some things that may help you. So we'll just, I've got some things laying out here and I'm just gonna share with them with you. So this is kind of fun. Uh, this is one of our new products coming January 5th, blending brush organization, uh, blending brush storage rack, Caddy, I'm not sure what the name of it is, uh, but you know, it's gonna be in the new catalog January 5th. So got my blending brushes put in there. I'm, I'm enjoying that. Uh, I did get one of the reasons, one of the times I do the most of my organization is when I get a new product order in. So I was able to pre-order a lot of the stuff that's coming out January 5th. When that all comes, I think like, okay, I better get organized. Otherwise it's gonna be a wreck because I have a lot of new stuff. So it inspires me to really get organized. Embellishment. So uh, this is something I had done quite a while back. I started using these little cases for embellishment storage and it had gotten a little out of control where I was just like dropping things in the drawer and not putting them back in the cases. And you know, these things happen sometimes. Plus I got a bunch of new ones. And anyway, it just needed a good freshening up. So what I do is they all just store inside here. I keep them on their original sheet without the sleeves included. Uh, and I stick one of each of them on the end. So these do fit in one of my drawers and they sit like this. Uh, so that when I open that drawer and I look down, I see which ones are in which case. I used to not pick out one of every color in the set. Like if it has five colors in a set, I didn't pick out all of them. I just picked out one. I switched that up. I Now I have like these little flower ones right here. I have one of every color on here. That way, depending on what project I'm making, I can really look through and see like, okay, what all colors do I have? And then grab the right case, open it up, and it makes it pretty easy to find the embellishments that I want punches so i've been trying to come up with a way for a while to protect my punches and i don't have one of my scratched up ones here but if you use this type of punch you know that over time the pretty silver part right here that shows you what punch this is uh, it gets scratched up even if you take really good care of them it gets marks on it it gets uh, fingerprints and stuff it gets scratched up and that just really drives me crazy so now you're learning some more about my personality Believe me, there's no room for perfection in the Hellman house. But if I can keep my punches from scratching on top, I wanted to figure out a way that I could. So I figured out that I could put contact paper on here and keep these uh, scratch free or mostly scratch free. So uh, that is a video coming out here sometime pretty close to this one. So keep an eye out for that one because I've got all my new punches uh, covered with contact paper. At some point, I'm gonna have to spend some time doing all my old punches in my free time when I get bored someday. Uh, next, let's talk about card bases and photo mats. So I like to keep card bases and photo mats already pre-cut and ready for my projects. And this saves so much time. When I started doing this, it saved you know, every time you have to walk to your paper collection, pick out the piece of paper you want, the color, cut it in half, score it for your card base. Like that takes some time. So this is something you should definitely do if you haven't already. Uh, I like to keep white and vanilla and crumb cake also. Uh, card mats prepared, which are the right size for the front of many of the card projects I make and also for the inside of the cards. So these measure four by five and a quarter. So I layer several on top of each other, get to cutting, cut a whole bunch at once so that I have them to use and I don't have to spend time cutting those every time I wanna make a project. 
and then my card bases. I've shared this before and I'm gonna link in the video description below to my current craft room tour when I had shortly after I had moved in here and also my previous craft room tour because you'll see a lot of these things up closer. Uh, I've done some updates, but you're, you'll be able to see a lot of these things and get a few more details about them. But here is just a little basket that, I don't know where this basket, basket came from, but I'm sure you can find one at the dollar store. And this is what I keep my card bases stored in. Aren't they pretty? So much fun to see the colors of the rainbow, like in my paper organizers behind me. So I keep those uh, right back here on one of my shelves. I can grab, grab when I start to make a project and oh so i'll talk about the bases a little bit more because i didn't really give a lot of detail so what i usually do is i cut like three or four pieces of cardstock in each color which gives me six or eight card bases in each color i actually do not score my card bases just for personal use when i'm doing classes and things i know a lot of you prefer to have your card bases scored so uh, when i'm offering things like that i score them but just for myself i don't i I find that I just line up when I'm folding it in half, I just line up the corners, use my bone folder to crease it. And I find that it lays flat better when I don't score them than when I do. So anyway, I just cut them in half. I don't score them. And then I organize them in rainbow order and keep like six or eight in my collection. Then as I use them, when I get down to usually the last one, I grab a few more pieces of cardstock, cut those in half, stick them back in so that I never run out of any of my colors. Yeah, so that's my card bases. Stamps, here's what I do with my stamps. I got lots of new stamp sets. Uh, I can't wait to share a lot of projects with you over the next several months using many of these stamps. But I just thought I would mention when, in, in my previous crafting days, I wasn't very organized. And when my stamps came, I stuck them in my collection and I started using them. I didn't, I didn't take any time to prep them and make them the most user-friendly they could be uh, so that when I pull them out, I can use them quickly. So what that meant was when I'd pull out a stamp set, I oftentimes needed to put the label on it. Uh, if I was using a rubber set like this uh, with the clear labels on the back, uh, a lot of times I'd have to label them. Just took a lot of time. So I finally got into where when my stamps come, even though it can take a little bit of time, if I have a lot of stamp sets in a particular box, uh, I label them, I prep them so that they're all ready. And when they go on my shelves or in my drawer, I know they're fully ready. When I pull that stamp set out, it is going to be ready to use. So with my rubber sets, I always uh, punch all those stamps out. I take that paper backing off and I put the cling labels on. Now, if you haven't seen my videos on preparing your stamps, I'm going to link to those in the video description below for some tips on what I do. And if you have a hard time putting those cling labels on your stamps, I have a video that makes it really simple and you get them lined up perfectly every time. So I will link to, like I said, my craft room tours and those in the video description below. Did wanna mention what I do with my photopolymer stamps, the clear ones. So this stamp set is fantastic. Taco Fiesta, holy guacamole, it's your birthday. Your nacho aver average friend. Anyway, okay, okay, I'm getting distracted again. So what do I do with my photopolymer stamps? Oh, here's what I do. So when you get these stamps, uh, Stampin' Up! changed the packaging a few years ago to where when you get them, uh, you're not gonna have a clear panel back here on the back side. What you have is something that looks more like this. Uh, this is telling you what to do with your stamps. And then the side panel is the same as always. So you can put these in a bookcase and see what's in there and the front. So this, this not being able to see through the back of my stamp cases, ah, I just can't handle that friends. So I figured out a way to fix it. And now I can see through the back of my stamp cases. So what I do is uh, I fold this open, I pull this label out and I cut it uh, just past the part that goes on the, the like binding part, the side part. 
then I'm gonna link you to a video on this as well. Uh, so then I put that piece, I just rearrange it and I slide it over on this other side. So it's just behind the front. And then I take one of the little plastic pieces that my stamps came in between, the little thin plastic that you peel off. I take one of them, I attach it to the inside of my case because it requires that for my stamps to be able to stick to the case. I love to store my stamps stuck to the case because when I wanna use them, I open it up, well, one, I can look through the back and figure out like, oh, is that greeting the right size? Is that what I actually wanna use? Okay, yeah, I want that. Okay, so then I grab it, open it up, and I don't have to deal with those plastic sheets. I pull the stamp off that I want when I'm done, I stick it back on because I put that little thin plastic sheet on the inside of my case, they stay put for a long time. Uh, I'm not sure how long because they have not started falling off since I did this. So uh, yeah, that's what I do with all of my photopolymer stamps. And I should have mentioned this. I also ink them with Versamark ink, clear ink, and then I clean them off. What I found is that you know how they can stain really bad and if you use them with a lot of purples or brown inks that are reds, they can get really dark, really stained. Since I started doing this, I ink them with the first mark, I clean them right away, then I put them in the case, they're all ready to use, and that really helps to prevent staining. They still stain some, but not nearly as bad as when I don't do the first mark process. Okay, friends, scraps, scrap paper. This is my last one. Uh, hopefully you're, you've picked up something here, but scraps is an important little topic. Before I figured out organization for my scraps, oh my goodness, what a wreck. I had mountains of scraps everywhere. I couldn't part with them. They're part of my family, right? Uh, like they're part of your family. You like, you know, like I could do something with that. I can make that beautiful. You don't want to throw them out. So. Uh, what I score my, store my scraps in, which you've seen before if you follow along, it is a photo file organizer. I organize them by color. So just to show you, I pulled out and they have these removable inserts. I love this for the photos. Uh, here you can see one of them. So this organizer, not too long ago, was a com complete wreck. It's bad. Uh, we, I, had, I had somebody here helping me that day. Uh, we dumped them out on the table. The table was covered in paper scraps. Sort them by color, then like general color. So I had like all the blues in one pile, all the purples in one pile, oranges and reds in a pile. Then I get to organizing them by actual color. So real red and pumpkin pie and Cajun craze and you know, the specific colors. And this is the most organized these have ever been. Then I even sorted them by size. So like if I have several pieces of the same size, uh, they all get stuck together. So my strips get stuck in a place and my small rectangles get stuck in a place and my really smaller, the smallest scraps, those go in the front. And I don't keep all my scraps. I have to tell you, getting rid of those little ones that you're pretty sure you're not going to use really makes life easier. So. Anyway, I got all of these organized and this is making life so much better. It actually, I think probably ends up saving money because I don't cut into nearly as many of my full sheets of paper because I know where my scraps are, I know where the colors are. And if I go there and I don't have any scraps, I realize, okay, I actually don't have any scraps in this color instead of having a lot of scraps in a certain color and they're just in a mountain somewhere and I can't find them. So. Anyway, that is fantastic. That has really helped a lot. So that's what I've been organizing lately. If you've been organizing, if you have any tips to share, I would love for you to comment below and tell me. I do have more organization videos planned in the future. Someday when I get my craft room like perfect and totally organized, I'll go through all my drawers and everything and I'll share with you so that maybe you can get some ideas from that. So thanks so much for joining in. I hope you subscribe if you're new here. You have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.